Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Steve Thompson, um, and I'm the Vice President of Solutions and Alliances here at Apex Digital Solutions. And we've got some interesting stuff in store for you uh, with these sessions today. Um, what we're gonna be doing um, is we're gonna be going through some different experiences uh, when it comes to Microsoft Teams rooms and how we work hybrid. Um, just like many of you, uh, we have transitioned how we work over the last few years. Um, some of that driven by environmental factors, some of that driven by technology and the capability we now have to work uh, wherever we might be stationed. Whether it's here in our office, I'm coming to you live uh, or on tape delay uh, from our offices here in Southfield, Michigan. Um, when we spend uh, time here, um, it's awesome. The collaboration, the culture, all of those things uh, happen best when we're together. Um, but sometimes we're not together. And so we're gonna walk you through some of those experiences that we have, um, the different environments we have, uh, the different uh, ways we collaborate, the different tools we use, and even some of the different personas. Uh, one of the things that uh, you'll discover on your hybrid journey is that there isn't a one size fits all, that it really comes to the kind of work people do, the kind of personalities they have, um, and the functions and roles they play in the organization drive a lot of your decision making about how to best enable that workforce. Here at Apex, we've got engineers and, and, and support technicians um, that work in a certain way and have very, very critical needs when it comes to our business. All the way through managers and salespeople, accounting and finance, up to our leadership team. Um, very different um, needs when it comes to, hey, how are we gonna collaborate? How am I gonna unlock my, my potential? So I'm here in a room we call Aegis. Um, Aegis is our central gathering space in our office. You can see uh, it's Microsoft Teams room equipped. Uh, this is where we will do company gatherings. Um, there's a space uh, behind the camera. Uh, we've got seating, we've got you know uh, bar height tables, we've got comfy couches. We've got uh, a really welcoming environment here that then is augmented by having the team's room capability. Even when we do quarterly company meetings, uh, there's always one or two people that can't make it into the office. Uh, they're out selling, they're out delivering. Uh, whatever it might be. And so we use the team's rooms and, and additional technology to bring them in to the meeting as a first party citizen. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in some of our previous events um, and our, our leadership is, is really uh, kind of thought leaders in this space is this idea of meeting equity, um, saying that, hey, everybody that uh, that participates in a meeting should have a, an equal opportunity um, to participate to the fullest, right? Whether they're remote, whether they're in person, whatever the tools they are using, that we don't get to a spot in the meeting, say, where we're collaborating on a whiteboard and all of a sudden somebody's left out. And so we'll talk about those experiences as we go around the office as well. Um, we've got some um, very cool scenarios that we've enabled uh, here in our offices uh, that probably mimic a lot of the things that you're thinking about on your journey to hybrid work. A little bit about us, um, Apex has been around for a long time, over 20 years, um, delivering technology uh, to customers and delivering solutions to customers um, that really fit their needs, right? Uh, we really talk about solving, not selling, um, and we don't come with preconceived notions, right? Uh, we work with a lot of vendors, a lot of providers. We've got a lot of great experience, and we bring all of that to the table when we work with you, um, really looking on making a solution uh, that fits best with your business. Um, and when we do that, you know that what we're really focused on is business outcomes. I've got a stressed out producer behind the camera because we're a working office, right? I'm delivering this in kind of a central location in our offices. I got people walking by in the background. We've got conference calls. We're delivering executive briefings. We're checking up on, on support incidents. Uh, we're designing new solutions for customers. Um, I think I've even got a couple of people trying to sell some stuff uh, in the back room. And so uh, this, is, uh, this is the way we work, right? Um, and, and here at Apex, we try and bring these experiences to bear when we work with you. 
So I'm going to be spending my time today um, sort of as your tour guide. I'm going to wander around the office, um, which I do anyways. It's just this time they're going to film me. Uh, and we're going to go to these spaces and talk with uh, the thought leaders, talk with our executives and the people um, that really unlock their potential uh, by utilizing these spaces. We've got uh, examples of, of some of the ways we work from home. We've got an executive space where um, our CEO actually spends most of his time uh, huddling and collaborating with others versus um, sitting at, a, at, at the big fancy desk, right? The reality now is, is most of our time is spent in, in small group collaboration and when you get up to that leadership team level. Um, we'll also spend some time in our multi-purpose room. Um, uh, the empowerment center that we have has got great technology in it, very modular when it comes to furniture and setup, uh, and we can repurpose it as a training room or a large meeting space, a customer event space. Um, and uh, with that, we also have technology in there that can make it work for remote attendees, um, for our team, our marketing team here to be able to capture it and repurpose it as digital content. And so we'll spend some time in there as well. Uh, we've got great equipment that we want to show off from our vendor partners like Logi, Poly, uh, and others. Uh, Jabra, uh, as a matter of fact, is, is another one we want to highlight. Uh, you'll see that in the executive space. So um, I'm glad you're here with us today. Um, thanks for, for joining us. We'll try and keep it uh, a little bit brief and, and interesting in each module because we want to show you how we work. Um, and it all starts here in Aegis, uh, where we gather as a company uh, and us kicking off the event. Just real briefly, this is actually a, a Yealink system. Um, we uh, also have delivered Yealink solutions uh, to customers as well. Um, and there's some nuance to this system that really fits the space. Um, the number one thing I always like to show off to folks is the wireless microphones. Uh, we can deploy these around the space as we're um, collaborating with someone remotely and ensure that they're not missing out on the conversation. Because you know, in an environment like this, you know, it's not all from the front sort of at the podium conversation. There's gonna be questions from the audience. There's gonna be uh, conversations that happen and we can use these wireless mics um, to make sure that, that everyone's included, right? That we have that meeting equity that I talked about. Um, this uh, system also has some cool features like remote presenters. So we can just plug into anyone's machine and make them a presenter in the meeting, um, as well as uh, the sort of the core Teams room functionality that you sort of know and expect. Uh, the, the camera, the, the great wide angle camera here uh, allows for us to just see everybody in the room uh, and provide that great remote experience uh, to anyone participating. And so with that, uh, we'll be starting our journey. Uh, we'll be doing some things uh, in different spaces. And the first space I'm going to head to is actually our empowerment center, uh, where we're going to talk about that large modular space and how we take advantage of it. Um, so won't you join me for the rest of the event? So one of the stops I wanted to make today is in our empowerment center. Um, the empowerment center is our largest space. It's very modular. We do lots of different things with it. I'm joined by our chief technology officer, Sean Flahey. Um, Sean's gonna uh, walk us through some of the technology and some of the, the, the things we're doing with the room. But before we even get into the room, we wanted to talk about what's sitting outside of it. So um, Sean, tell me a little bit about what's going on here. So what we're looking at here is this is a Teams panel. And so this is a panel that sits outside the conference room and gives the users visual indicators whether the room is used or not. So obviously on the side here, we can see that Michael has scheduled a meeting with this room. And so the side lights show that it's purple uh, for it's a Teams meeting. Um, if this room were actually available and nothing was booked, we would actually see this is green and available. Um, in the next segment, we'll kind of show a little demo on how we can actually walk up to these panels and schedule an ad hoc meeting so that the room is booked and uh, that other users can see that the room um, is used. And this has got a lot of traction with our customers. I understand that there are some customers that just get really jazzed looking down a long hallway and seeing, seeing a bunch of green or seeing a bunch of purple. And it really makes scheduling meetings and kind of knowing your resources easier. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of customers with a lot of conference rooms have had similar type devices for a while. 
um, but they were never really truly teams integrated. So the nice thing about these is these are running a flavor of teams for these specific teams panels, and um, it integrates right with the conference room right next to it. So it's, it's not a standalone device. It's reading the information from the room it's attached to. That's right. Awesome. Well, that's very cool. So one of the things Sean mentioned is the functionality to see if rooms were booked or not. When we started out, we had the room booked. Uh, we actually wanted to make sure uh, nobody double booked the room uh, as we were doing this work today. Um, but now we freed it up. Um, so Sean, just talk to us a little bit about this side of the functionality as well. Yeah, I'm walking down the hallway looking for a meeting room to have my ad hoc meeting in. I look at this room, I see the side uh, indicators that it's green. I also look at the front here and it says available. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I wanna reserve this room so no one else can take it and book it in the calendar. I'm gonna click reserve. Uh, I wanna reserve it uh, at 10.15 right now. I'm gonna click reserve. And now my, my room is booked until 10.15 and I have the room available and reserved. And it went back purple, right? So we got that visual indicator showing that this resource is occupied. Exactly. That's really slick, and it seems like the kind of thing that we want to pair with most of the rooms we do for our customers. Uh, pretty easy add-on that adds a lot of functionality. Absolutely. And I want to also call it the install of these things is super easy as well. Um, we simply mounted this on the wall, and it gets powered by a single Cat5 Ethernet cable. Uh, obviously using power over Ethernet on the back end, but uh, one cable to to the mount and um, looks looks very uh, nice and professional there. Awesome. All right. So now uh, now that we've talked a little bit about this cool panel, um, let's go ahead and move into the Empowerment Center um, and kind of uh, see see what's going on in there and see how we use that space. So now we've moved into our empowerment center, that large modular space I was talking about. Um, still here with Sean, uh, our CTO. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this room. First off, let's just start with what I see behind me on the screen. That's really cool. Um, tell me a little bit about this branding that we can do both for ourselves and our customers. Yeah, absolutely. So right here we have a Microsoft Teams room uh, with a dual display design here. And we've actually custom branded both of these screens to have our Apex logo. Uh, a little slogan here. Uh, it really just looks really nice when we have customers and vendors in here. Uh, it really pops when you first walk into the room. And I know some customers use the branding, you know, for their, their corporate logo or image, but I think I've heard that some of them actually will put like the room's name or uh, other interesting things about the room, a sponsor. We work with some nonprofits and I think they even put sponsors in the branding. You could do whatever you want. Absolutely. We've seen sponsored rooms. We've seen customers put instructions on what to do when they get into the room on the custom brand. So various ideas uh, of what you can do. And you mentioned that this is a Teams room system running on Windows. So why don't you just talk a little bit about uh, what we got here, right? There's a lot going on. Sure. Um, like you said, this is a Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows device. So this is a Lenovo ThinkSmart Core PC. This is what actually runs the Microsoft Teams rooms app. We also have the touch panel here, which is a Logitech tap. This is where I can actually control what happens to the meetings. When I first walk into the room, uh, I wanna join my Teams meeting. Only thing I'm gonna do is walk in, see the meeting, hit the join button. That's awesome. And so scheduled meetings, but I also notice it has a meet now functionality. So you can not have a meeting scheduled and go ahead and launch it from the panel as well. Absolutely. Um, I can walk in here and just click the Meet Now button, and that begins an ad hoc Teams meeting within the room. So that was great. You walked us through the basics of, of what's, uh, what's running the system, but there's also a lot of accessories, a lot of other stuff up here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So we obviously talked about the compute device that runs the Teams Rooms app. We talked about the touch controller that you can join your meeting from, but there's also various other peripherals that are needed to make a fully, uh, fully functional Microsoft Teams Rooms. So... In this example here, we're using a Logitech Rally system, which has the Logitech Rally speakers, the Logitech Rally camera, and we also have here the Logitech Rally mic pod, um, where I can mute and unmute the room. Um, obviously, we just have it up here at the front. Uh, we're looking at a multi-purpose room here. So we have various options of what we can do in our specific room. Uh, in a typical conference room type environment, these mic pods would sit in the middle of a table. 
so kind of a more predictable use, right? It's always set up as a as a conference room with a long table. Let's deploy the mics to the table. Absolutely. Right. Got it. Yeah, and you mentioned that this is a, a multi-purpose room. And so in addition to the accessories that are up here, we even have some built-ins, don't we? Absolutely. So uh, as you mentioned, multi-purpose room, we have furniture that's very movable. This furniture never stays in the same spot. So what we've done is we've installed a microphone in the ceiling and also speakers in the ceiling as well. Um, so we're not dealing with wires that are all across the floor or uh, having people trip over them or, or running them over with the tables and things like that. Not like today where doing our filming, there's kind of wires everywhere. Yeah, all over the place. <laughs> and so you mentioned the multi-purpose. We use this for customer events, large team meetings. Um, do you deal with a lot of rooms like this where the flexibility is an important consideration? Absolutely. We deal with rooms with all sorts of sizes. As you mentioned, the pr more predictable ones, the small and medium sized rooms that have the stationary table. But absolutely, there are many customers that have multi-purpose rooms, very large conference rooms, movable furniture. There's just various scenarios that we see all the time. And there are, for all those scenarios of rooms, there's all different types of designs and setups of Microsoft Teams rooms to meet the need of the customer. I know one of the things that, that you've done with, with a number of our customers is that custom engineering, right? And even in some cases, reuse of some of the equipment they have. I know I talk to a lot of customers that have conference rooms that were video enabled maybe five years ago right. with just a massively different set of technology. Can we reuse some of that stuff when it comes to team rooms? I'll give the standard consulting answer. It depends, right? Okay. Um, so absolutely. Uh, if you have brand new TVs, new projectors, things like that, we'll assess those and verify, is that going to be the best experience uh, that we can have to have a, a great Teams meeting experience? And if so, absolutely, we'll, we'll say, yeah, we can reuse that TV, we can use that projector. If not, maybe the, the TVs are a little bit too small, maybe the uh, projector bulb is, is a little bit older, it's not very clear. We want, when we, when we build these rooms, we want the best Teams experience for both the people inside the room and the remote participants. And um, that's why we're gonna design them in the best way possible. And another thing that I think we bring to the table, you specifically and your team of, of technologists, is that environmental piece, right? So I asked about old hardware. It's also spaces are all different. Walls of windows and odd lighting and you know crazy stuff. How do we engineer around that or how do you take that into consideration? Yeah, absolutely. We wanna talk about what is the sound gonna be like, right? Um, is, is there carpet on the floor? Is it, is it you know concrete? Uh, how high are the ceilings? What are the ceilings made of? What are the, what's the HVAC situation? Is it really loud in here? So if I put uh, a microphone right next to an HVAC up in the ceiling. Hypothetically. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, is that going to affect the noise? The noise? Sure. Um, walls. Uh, are the walls made of glass? Is that camera, is there a potential for that camera to pick up people walking outside of the room? Various different scenarios that we always think about. Uh, pretty much every scenario we can possibly think of when we design these things. Um, to, again, make sure we have that best experience for both in-room participants and remote participants. And so I go back to your, the consulting answer, it depends, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the bundles we provide with our, our partners and our services, they fit into rooms great, right? The pre-packaged solution. Right. Sometimes got to roll up your sleeves and see what we're dealing with. Absolutely. All right, so one of the things I wanted to do today, we're doing uh, a lot of filming and, and uh, um, uh, capturing uh, images and thoughts, but let's go ahead and join a Teams meeting. And just to warn everybody, you're gonna see behind the camera because you're gonna take a look at the other right. side. Yep. Yeah, so really what we're trying to do here is, what's the experience of an end user when you walk into a conference room? The goal of these systems is the easiest meeting join experience possible. Uh, we, we're aware that there's been a lot of video conferencing equipment and room PCs and various equipment in conference rooms that's sometimes been difficult for users to understand when they walk into a room. And so we want to change that game. We want users to walk in, walk up to the touch panel, see the join button and click join. Uh, we call that a one touch join process. So as we can see, the system woke up, uh, the camera turned on and pointed outwards, and we're off and running. And now you're seeing the guy behind the camera. Exactly. <laughs> um, his preview is way over here on this screen. 
kind of the downside as we talk about this stuff is uh, we're up close to a really big video wall here. And this was custom engineered for us, right? So this is an example of that kind of engineering work we can bring to customers. Absolutely. All right, so now what we've done is we actually added some content to the meeting so you can kind of see what we're talking about when it comes to that immersive experience. I know, Sean, do you have some thoughts on just how this works in, in our environment when it's time for meetings? Yeah, so obviously we have a dual display environment here. So when someone is presenting content into a Teams meeting, you can see it on one monitor and on the other monitor will be the participants in the video feeds should we have had others in the meeting. So at the same time, we can collaborate on content, we can see what people are sharing, but then still have that video view. Um, two screens really driving that. It, two screens is a function of the capability of this system, or is that something that's universal? Yeah, so dual screen works with Teams Rooms on Windows and Teams Rooms on Android. Awesome. Well, this was great. Thanks, Sean. Um, as you can see, we do a lot of this uh, engineering for our customers as well as for ourselves. Um, it really is powerful stuff uh, here in the Empowerment Center uh, where we host events, we host uh, large team meetings, we walk customers through some of these experiences as well um, with some additional demo equipment. Now I'm going to head over to our executive space uh, and spend some time with our CEO uh, and really find out how the systems and the solutions are working for him. Sean, this was great. Thanks for the time. Uh, we're in our executive space. I'm here with our CEO, Jason Lambiris. Uh, Jason, you spend uh, a lot of your day collaborating. And so we wanted to just talk to you a little bit about uh, your experiences, uh, both you know with this room and this system, but just sort of how you approach hybrid work. So uh, we're sitting at a side table, at a huddle table in your space. You've yep. got a desk over there. How much do you use both of them? You know, uh, I'd say probably 90, 95% of my time easily is spent actually sitting here in this space, or it's going to be in some of the other meeting rooms throughout the office. Um, a lot of my heads down work, uh, I tend to do if I'm working at home or maybe out on site somewhere. Um, but typically when I'm in the office, it's either having one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, might be hybrid meetings as well. So, you know, this is kind of a preferred spot for me, if you will, again, if I'm not in one of the other rooms. Um, and it's just from a, a convenience standpoint, right? Larger screen as we're talking or maybe going reviewing uh, some information or if we're going through a few things with uh, with a client that may be in. Um, but yeah, vast majority of my time I, I'm, I'm spending here these days. No, that's great. And, and the hybrid work story is something that we hear from everybody. Um, so when you think about the time you spend how much of it during the course of a day is really working with other people or working in small groups versus you mentioned head down time. Yep. I don't see you having a lot of that. Just kind of walk us through how you how you uh, approach that balance. You know, um, a lot of it is just get kind of how I try to, to, to lay out my weekly schedule. Right. Um, so if I if I, you know, I'll say typically on, a, on a Mondays. Right. Uh, it's going to be a day that I'm that I'm working from home. Um, I try to schedule a lot of my focus time um, and, and the things where I need a couple of hours, right? Just to kind of get immersed in that work and focus on it. Um, so I'll try to schedule those particular days. You know, I've, I also try to align kind of my in-office days when when I know other team members are gonna be in as well. Um, and, uh, you know, those are the days that it's, you know, meeting room to meeting room or teams meeting to teams meeting. Um, you know, one-on-ones, I'll try and schedule around those times as well but uh, kind of compartmentalize my week the best that I, that I can. So we spent some time in the Empowerment Center uh, with Sean, our CTO, and he walked us through the experiences in there. I know we've also brought customers into this space, right? Yeah. Uh, when you're talking to your peers, CIOs, CEOs of other organizations, um, and you sort of walk them through this space, what kind of feedback do you get from them uh, when they see this arrangement and they think about their own hybrid work? You know, I think, um, uh, you are have definitely kind of been, uh, I don't know if surprise is the right word, maybe a little bit of an epiphany moment. Um, not uncommon to have a, a, a side table, right? Small round, little peninsula table, whatever it may be for a smaller meeting. Um, but many may even have a TV, right? That they have, you know, maybe they got news or information or things, but they 
very few of them think about putting a team's room actually in their office. Um, and I find it very convenient. Again, uh, even if it's not a hybrid meeting, just being able to have this here for in an example, again, you and I to be able to bring up some information to review some things together. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually encourage the team on the days that I'm not here or the room's not in use. If anybody else from the team needs to sit down and just have a one on one meeting uh, or collaborate on a few things, it's feel free to use the space. Right. I think even a few times we've kicked you out of your hey, own office. Yeah, that, that has happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the nice things uh, with the partnerships we have is we get great devices. And so in here, we've got mm -hmm. this, uh, this Jabra device, um, and it really does some amazing things up to and including, uh, we'll see here in a second, this wide angle lens, right? So uh, I know from the perspective of the cameras, it looks like we're, we're really tucked up nice and close to the wall. But I think we found that this is a great device in this kind of confined space because it can see everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, we've had... Uh, as you all know, right, we we uh, make sure that we're trying all the devices that we're recommending to customers. This is probably about the fourth or fifth iteration of a device that's been in this room. Um, and, and I'd say by far, just from a camera experience and inclusivity and in, in the features on it, I think it's providing the best experience both on this side, but definitely for the remote attendees as well. You know, it's just kind of an interesting layout in the space that, you know, we're pretty much a, a foot away, our shoulders are from this display. And previously, people on the other side would, would kind of get a clipped view. But this just does a, an amazing job of, of, of framing everything for everybody on the remote end. And then one of the things I talked to Sean about was branding, right? Yep. With the Windows devices, there's really some amazing things you can do. And I can see here this is a branded device as well. Um, is that something you've shared uh, your thoughts with customers on that, you know, these aren't static devices that you can actually invite people into the space through branding through uh i think we've even had some customers do creative things like sponsoring rooms in yep. that nonprofit world just tell me a little bit about those conversations you've had yeah you know it, it you know i i think branding is important but also just from a cultural standpoint in an organization right um so whether it's just the the standard brand core values mission purpose statements things like that that are up and internal or maybe it's especially for spaces you're inviting customers in maybe it's things like your brand promises right um or maybe even from a theme standpoint of what's going on in initiatives around the organization i think those are great things to have up versus just a generic display i think it's more as you said, inviting, it's more welcoming, it's more familiar, um, and an opportunity for messaging both internal and, and outside the organization. Um, I think a really unique opportunity for nonprofits, right? Not uncommon in the nonprofit space that they may be uh, challenged with budget, right? For, for technologies and not uncommon that there are individual donors or sponsors or corporate sponsors. Uh, often rooms are in buildings are named after uh, uh, in honor of these sponsors. So we had uh, come up with a few ideas and suggested some of our nonprofits of, hey, what if we got creative and did some branding that could be changed out that's that's digital on the screen, so. Not the same scale as Ford Field or anything like that, but hey, every little bit helps. Absolutely. Sean also talked about um, the modularity and, and how we, um, through our engineering or through our recommendations, really match the system to the environment. So let's talk um, just about this system a little bit. In our empowerment center, there's accessories, there's microphones, there's things hanging from the ceiling. This is a really neat look. Um, and I just, I, I think it really fits the space. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, I think the key thing was in here, right? And, and, and again, we went through some iterations of different systems, was keeping things nice, tight, clean, and, and out of the way, right? Small table, not uncommon that, you know, easily seats three people, we'll kind of pull four chairs around from time to time. Um, but people are going to bring in their laptops or devices or notebooks or, or tablets, whatever you may have. So, uh, again, being able to have the bar up out of the way, just below the TV, you know, little things we'll pay attention to is what's line of sight, right, from our gaze or our view. Um, you know, body language and, and just feeling connected to the people on the other side is really important. Um, and then being able to have the, you know, the display to be able to anybody around the table to be able to reach in, touch, maybe it's change the view. Uh, if they're not casting wirelessly, yep. right? We've got the HDMI ingest cable here for people to plug in, um, which is also handy again, not just for hybrid meetings, but 
somebody touches down, wants to share something on screen with somebody else at the table. So, and this Panacast, you talked about the iterations, right? We've we've yeah. been at this a while, and yeah. we've seen the technology grow. The intelligent camera in here really does some fun stuff. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and let's 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 join a meeting we had queued up. Queued up. Go ahead and mute it, right, to make sure we don't get that that feedback echo. And the first thing that I notice is that we're getting a video feed that we can see here. I think uh, I think our production team is also capturing it. Um, it's framing us individually. This isn't one camera, so um, that's a pretty cool feature. No, it's uh, it's definitely key, right? So this is kind of a a, a newer experience as as the technology is evolving. And, and I think, especially when, not just in a small room, but when you get into some of these larger rooms, uh, again, body language is important, right? Being able to see people's reactions, facial expressions, um, it, it's, it's key to, to communication and context. Absolutely, and, it, and it's that, that personal feel, right? Uh, the, there's some front row technology, there's this intelligent framing, all really designed uh, to, to bring equity to these meetings so that you know, we all feel like first level participants in them. I know meeting equity is something that you've talked a lot about. Um, maybe just walk me through real quick, like what does it mean to you and, and, and how, does, how does Apex and a solution provider sort of fit into a company strategy? Yeah, sure. So I think there's a few, few different levels of it, right? Um, you know, just from an experience standpoint, if it's content that we're presenting, if it's just even again, people talking, I'll go back to just the importance of communication. It's actually a small, small percentage that uh, comes through in intent and communication if it's just written word, right? You introduce voice to that, yep, the, the, the understanding on the other side goes up by a, by a decent percentage, but it's really body language. And um, you know, I've shared this story a little bit before uh, due to uh, my, my time in the construction trades and probably a little bit too much loud music in my, in my youth, uh, I have some hearing challenges. So sometimes audio can kind of get you there, right? But being able to actually see somebody speaking I mean, and we go back to the intelligent framing, for me, it just makes it that much clearer, right? So it could even be background noise, right? So kind of thinking about inclusivity from that way where people may have hearing impairments or challenges or let's just talk about language barriers, that, that's gonna help as well. And then you layer in things like uh, live transcription, right? It's just gonna, gonna help out that much more. Um, but also just from a view standpoint, right? Again, I go back to uh, some of the other collaborative technologies that we've been talking about or demonstrating around whiteboarding capability uh, or even, even size of screen makes a difference, viewing angles. So all of those factors really come in, come into play. And I think a lot of people don't realize what they're missing out on or that it's needed until they experience it, right? And I, I think that's why it's important that we continue uh, the, the journey we've been on to, to, to kind of get the word out, right? And to do sessions like this and, and have our customers come in and experience, you know, kind of hands-on what that feels like. I think one key thing we bring to the table is understanding the difference between, hey, pre-packaged, there are some, you know, there are some room archetypes that, yep. hey, this is going to work great in there. Um, but Sean also talked about a lot of the great custom engineering that we do. And just as kind of a fun aside, your office has got a bunch of windows, right? And yep. so we're finding, you know, nuance and, and things like you describe. And then we turn around and bring that to the customers, right? That sometimes we walk in a room and be like, yep, stock, let's go. And sometimes we walk in and go, uh oh okay, we got challenges, right? Yep. So um, to me, that's a great, uh, a, a great uh, set of experiences that we bring to the table for our customers. No, I think, I think it's key, right? It goes back to the importance of actually using and really kind of field or battle testing the technology that you're gonna recommend. You know, the Windows is a, is a great example. When we first put this camera in and a few of the views, right? I've got traffic that kind of goes by and we would see an experience where things would start framing mm -hmm. to it. Um, but that's where understanding, hey, how can we tune this? What adjustments can we make? Uh, maybe what things could be done from a fixture or furniture standpoint, like all of that comes into play. And I think that's one of the, the key differentiators for us, right? We're not thinking about just the technology. We're thinking about what is that end user experience going to be in the room and what is it going to be for the people on the other side, right? Uh, we've even talked about you know, windows when they're opposite of the camera. 
Um, just understanding that the people on the other side may see a reflection of the TV or themselves, mm -hmm. right? And those, again, are things that aren't commonly thought about, but, uh, uh, you know, it's been part of, part of the, the journey along the way and, and the value that we can bring. So one last question for you. I know one of the things that you've been passionate about and, and one of the things that we've seen evolve is the kind of uh, the kind of furniture or the kind of, of implementations of the technology, right? Yep. This is pretty standard. This is hang a TV on the wall, put a bar under it. Um, we've explored partnerships and are doing work with furniture vendors and rolling carts. And um, how do you see that as sort of changing the game with customers? Well, you know, I think it kind of again comes back to come back comes back to standards. It comes back to experience, what the room looks like, right? Um, you know, again, you want things to not only look clean and tight from just an appearance or an aesthetic standpoint, but I think that also becomes important when it comes to troubleshooting or can issues go wrong, mm -hmm. right? Um, so little examples of, you know, do we have the wires kind of locked away and, and tightened up? Because if there is an issue, commonly people just start kind of unplugging stuff and kind of moving stuff around, right? So we want to avoid any any issues and, and that's where furniture, fixtures, um, and just being, um, you know, very thoughtful uh, about how things are connected and in, in the standards that, that we achieve with that. And I think that's one of the things that Apex really brings to the table is this very, very unique mix. You mentioned the construction trades, right? Yep. This is a little bit construction, a little bit low voltage wiring, a little yep. bit you know, sound engineering, um, all those things brought together. And we've got a great team that can deliver those things. Well, you know, on, on, on that note, right, I, I think your, your point is, is that, you know, this isn't just a technology discussion. You're working with facilities, you're working with engineering, you're working with furniture and fixture people. Um, so making sure that you're having that conversation early. And I think with a lot of the kits that are out, right, um, there's a lot of possibilities to retrofit rooms um, in, in a way that doesn't in, have to involve a lot of heavy construction or wiring costs, right? Um, you know, every scenario is going to be a little bit different, but the advancements that I've seen in, in just the, the past year, right, beyond, in addition to the technology, I should say, for those considerations has is, is, is been great. Either that or you just get the boss to bring in his power tools. There you go. That All can right. happen too. Well, hey, this was great. I really appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, lots of great information, um, lots of opportunity for our customers to get engaged and really benefit. Like you said, we've been through a lot of iterations of this. I think we've landed on something that works really well, well in this space, works really well in this space. And so we're going to move uh, into a couple more experiences. Um, Jason, thanks so much for your time uh, and sharing uh, the Executive Briefing Center with us. Thanks, Steve. So we've moved into another space here at the Apex office, uh, and I'm here with Courtney Talbot, our Vice President of Service Delivery. Uh, she leads our uh, delivery efforts across everything we do, um, and this is really her team's space. So, hey, C Courtney, thanks for joining us. Um, really uh, looking forward to the conversation. Um, tell me a little bit about your team and how they work. They're sort of the original hybrid workers. Yeah, so we have people that are working from home, working on client sites, working in the office. They use this office to stage their equipment that we are then going and deploying out to our clients. One thing that's really nice about this room is this room system so that we can join meetings when they are out on site or at their home office and be able to then get everybody in one place at a time. So it's really nice that way. Yeah, we've been visiting all the different spaces in the Apex office and looking at how the different teams or the different individuals use them. Your team, like you said, in the field, at home, here in the office need to collaborate. And so we've installed this room system here for them to use. Have you gotten some feedback from them about what they love about it or how it makes their jobs easier? Um, they really do like it because of the fact that we can be in here, we're still all together, even though they are at different locations. And then even to be able to show something on camera of what they're working on or what they're experiencing and they need to collaborate and get troubleshooting ideas, we have that available to them too. So they're excited. Awesome. And we work with a lot of customers that also have sort of this field service or customer service, um, you know, out and about kind of functionality. And so I know one of the things that we've done is we brought customers 
into our own spaces and kind of show them how we use it. Um, I really would welcome customers coming and seeing how we use this and maybe spending some time with you and your team. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, I would love to be able to show this off because it is nice to be able to have, be able to collaborate in multiple ways, right? And having people on site at their home office and here in the office um, and get the same experience. So we've seen a number of different installs. And when I look at this system, first off, um, very different installation. We've got the camera up top. We've got the room system off to the side versus that executive space all in one. So um, when I first saw the system, I was a little concerned they would just be seeing the top of everybody's head, but that system zooms down on whoever's talking, right? It does. It does. And it'll follow you around so you can actually be working on something on the table and then go and grab something out. Like it'll follow you. When I talked to Sean, our CTO, um, we talked about different cameras and accessories and so forth. And we're going to walk through a couple of things that are in here, but you've actually got this fun table space as well. I could see an upgrade for this room being some cameras hanging from the ceiling. You know, that's the first thing they asked <laughs> with the support team. When they saw this setup, they asked if they could get some cameras up there to be able to go down and right on top of what's going on here. So I think that's our future upgrade. Awesome. Very cool. So Michael added a meeting for us uh, to join from this room. And so we've been going and doing this uh, from the different spaces. Again, this is a Windows-based room system. Uh, we've got some branding um, and we've got a meeting ready to go. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and click join. Click join to join the meeting and then uh, quickly hit mute, right? Uh, one of the challenges we have in producing these videos is just being able to uh, uh, get the audio right. Uh, it's a little bit different when you're in a meeting versus when you're producing something like this. And as you can see, we've got a remote attendee. We've got that team's experience. We've got the view of the room down here in the corner. And I think we've got some shots that can uh, show that um, in greater detail. And you can see the whole room. Uh, at the same time, you can get the detail uh, that's being picked up. So I know we use these for team meetings, right? When we meet together and, and, and need to share information and collaborate, but your team also uses it for something commonly known as remote help. Why don't you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so a lot of times we'll have somebody in the field and then somebody in the office and you know they can easily get on a team's meeting and be able to see um, you know, through screen share what's going on. You know, So being able to share their screen and you know, be able to, the person here can direct them um, and get a better view than just on their day-to-day -day, um, monitor. Or if they're actually working on equipment here in the office and the expertise is outside, being able to show them what we're experiencing, um, it works really well. Another thing I know we're doing and a lot of customers talk about is moving things like training assets and sort of show me kinds of help into this video format, right? And I know we use all these Teams rooms for those kinds of things. Um, so maybe there's a future uh, for the team to use it for training videos, whether for customers or whether it's for the sort of the next person on the team and being able to get them up to speed fast. Oh, I can see where that would be a great benefit to be able to do that because, it, it, you know, trying to learn hands-on and being there, it, it, you have somebody over your shoulder. So right now, you know, through the pandemic, we've, we've struggled with that a little bit, being able to have people work together, even though they're in remote, lo different locations. Um, so being able to do that and using the room systems for the training videos and having those types of training scenarios is going to be a great asset. So let's go ahead and add one of the, the fun features in your space, which is this content camera. So we have a, a Logi Scribe that's installed. You can see that it uh, grabbed the whiteboard and framed it. And actually, I don't know if the right verb is it, de-keystoned it, right? The, the Scribe is, is up above the whiteboard. So it's at a really, really uh, crazy angle, um, but it figures that out and then turns it into a, a nice uh, rectangle to use. And so that physical whiteboard in this space has been turned into a digital whiteboard. Um, Courtney, why don't you just kind of show us how that works? Yeah, you can, so you can just write up here on it. Um, and it will take it. And well, and a couple of amazing things happen. First off, 
made your arm invisible, right? It knew that the arm wasn't a part of the digital whiteboard and sort of uh, made it uh, a little bit transparent, but it grabbed your text, right? And actually made it darker. So it sensed the text and, and highlighted it for the rest of us on the meeting. We have a couple of different shots. I, um, you know, we can see natively what that whiteboard looks like, but we can also see it on the screen here and how it came into just a much crisper focus. I could see this being a great tool for your team. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, like I said, when we're trying to capture meeting notes or even just brainstorming, right, on different ways to approach obstacles, being able to come up here or even network diagrams, right? It, as you're trying to map things out of how an environment is supposed to look, being able to capture it up here um, and not have everybody in the room in the conversation. Well, just like we said, training assets being turned into videos, just like everybody who does home repair now just goes to YouTube, finds the video about how to do something. I could see your team doing a wiring diagram or an as-built piece of uh, documentation just on this whiteboard, capture it digitally, and boom, it's preserved for the customer, for our uh, assets and intellectual property going forward. So this is Courtney's workspace. We're actually uh, gonna go over and visit her office here um, at our Apex office in Southfield, Michigan, and give a little bit of that personal device or that personal experience when it comes to hybrid work. Uh, we'll pretend she's in the office for a while, then maybe we'll pretend she's at home as well. So now we've moved into your office. This is your office here in our, our Southfield, Michigan uh, uh, location. Um, but I think we should talk about both how you work in the office and how you work at home. And so we've got a, a personal device set up going here. Why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, so we have the Logi Doc. Um, and what's nice about it is to have a streamlined, um, consistent audio. Um, nothing's worse than joining a meeting, right? And people can't hear you. You want to have an experience that's the same for people that are in the office that are at home. With the Logidoc, it's a one-touch join, so you'll just be able to click the meeting. If I hung up here, it'll turn it off. Oh, nice. And if I needed to join back on, you know, I can start a meeting and be able to join right there. I can easily mute and turn on my camera right here. I don't have to do my mouse. So I have the Logibrio camera. I'm getting a call right here, so we'll be able to... Just tap it on and connect. And boom, we're in the meeting. And boom, we're in the meeting. Very nice. And so um, the experience of, of, of individual people working in teams is also something to think about. Um, I've been touring the rooms. I spent some time in your service delivery area. Um, but just as critical is when you're working from home, when you're working on the road, or, or when you're working independently here in the office. Um, maybe uh, talk a little bit about how kind of your approach to work and collaboration has changed over the last couple of years. There's been a lot of improvements in the technology as well as some reasons for us to stay home. It's, it's funny, um, you know, when things started the you know even the cameras on the laptops right they were grainy um not the best experience a lot of times depending if you're using the laptop you know as your camera you've got looking up people's noses or you know the just you know so having the camera mounted above the monitor provides a consistent view um you don't have to worry about adjusting the your laptop or anything around that nature Getting people in laptops was a big thing too, making sure that they had the devices that could they could easily travel with from home and um, the office. I feel like we've gotten pretty good about using our cameras all the time. What's your experience been with customers? Are, are there some of them a little shy or are we, we about 80, 90% camera time? I think if we always join on camera, so um, I think when they see you on camera, they're more likely to turn on their camera and have that experience. I find it's a way to connect with people when they're all over the, you know, the US or wherever you're working um, to have that on. So you do have that human interaction, not just looking at little bubbles of people's pictures. So that's been helpful for me. So I find if I turn my camera on, they're more likely to follow suit. I spoke to Jason about meeting equity. Um, our boss is particularly passionate about that. And the personal camera, I think, is a big part of that, right? It's the visual cues. It's 
understanding when someone's smiling when they're saying something. I know it's really helped me connect with people better being someone who uh, lives in another state to be candid, right. right? I don't live here in Michigan. And so I rely on it to be able to connect with you and everyone else on the team using that video aspect. I would agree. Um, because my team is mostly remote or at client sites, you know, we don't get in the office very often and be able to be together. So having the camera um, on during meetings, you know, it, it helps deliver messages. You can see their body language um, a little easier than just trying to understand the inflection in people's voices. And when you talk about the personal experience and personal devices, you know, we're fortunate. We work with a lot of great partners. Um, they want to capture our attention. So we have lots of devices that we have access to. Um, how has that been important to you? You know, some people are headset people. Some people are speaker phones. Like, I, I know it's critical to me to have the right device for me. Has that helped you? Do you find your team wants different devices than you want? Like, how, how does that kind of manifest itself with, with our organization? I think, I think everybody has a personal preference. Um, you know, some people like the wired headset, some people like to be, be able to move around and pace as they're on calls. So being able to have, you know, wire free and being able to move as they get things done. Um, I think I think having options is a good thing. And um, I know our team all, ha all have different preferences. I, I like the wired headset, but then I also like the the Logi Doc at here, and then at home I have the Poly Speak. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, I've got a new video device that I've been uh, using. Really, really love it. But I know together we discovered that it likes to zoom in on me if I move around the room. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's important to know the capabilities of the devices you're using because um, sometimes they become so advanced that we don't even realize that they're going to adapt to the situation. Say, if I need to take a stroll around the room or something like that. It is nice when they kind of zoom in too. You'll be like, like it's a deep conversation and then the camera zooms in on you and you're like, mm. Mm -hmm. um, Anything else you want to share like about your homework experience or I something? I did want to just, uh, on this Logidoc, the nice thing about it is it does just have one plug that goes into my laptop. So I don't have to mess with a lot of cables or anything moving from home, my home office to my Apex office, I can just set everything up, plug it in, and I'm ready to go, which makes it easy. And even for the non-technical people, they can handle that. Um, and it, like I said, I, less troubleshooting, finding out what doesn't work. It just plugs in, and it's ready to go. And that's one of the things that, that, that we've discovered or we have access to to support our customers is really the nature of these devices is changing. This is you know, port replicator dock meets team certified device, right? And we've got panels, we've got uh, personal devices that are, are just uh, um, fully focused on teams, as well as all the accessories people think about when it comes to headsets and uh, audio and video devices. Well, hey, Courtney, this has been great. Um, thanks for uh, spending a little time with us in your uh, office here um, and giving us a glimpse of how you use the personal technology. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed your time with us today. Um, lots of great experience. Thanks to my coworkers for uh, humoring uh, me and the marketing team, uh, capturing all these uh, these great videos and, and answering our questions and kind of walking us through a bit about how they work. Um, I'm, as you can see, I'm back in Aegis. Uh, I'm thanking you for your time. Uh, Apex uh, offers solutions uh, across hybrid work and collaboration, um, whether it's assessments and workshops as you're starting your journey or thinking about uh, where to go first when it comes to uh, uh, moving along the glide path to, to true hybrid work uh, through our Ignite and Empower offerings, where we, we, we work to bring the solution to the environment as a whole, and then can work with you on an ongoing basis when it comes to support and advisory services, when it comes to um, continuing to up your game or freeing your team from the day to day so that they can go innovate and drive the business. Um, all of those things we love doing for customers. We do them each and every day. It's in our DNA. And so uh, please give us a call. 
uh, reach out uh, via whether it's our website, uh, whether it is through your account executive. Um, if you aren't a current customer, please reach out to sales at apexdigital.com. Um, I always uh, give out my own email address as well. So it's S Thompson, T H O M P S O N, at apexdigital.com, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, I love hearing from, from new and existing customers uh, and talking to them about their needs and how we can be of help. So, again, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate the time. Hope you learned a little bit, uh, had a little bit of fun, uh, and we'll see you next time.